This isn't just my idea of the perfect commuting vehicle, but it's a world first, too. A London taxi made seaworthy. I hope. I don't mind telling you, I'm more than a little apprehensive as to how it's all going to turn out. If it goes wrong, I shall be mildly moist, to say the least. Time for my team to unveil the beast. I just hope they hadn't turned my plans for a super commuter into some sort of foul-looking dinghy. Oh, my God, I'm so nervous. I love this thing like a Are baby. Are you ready? Just about. OK? Yeah. Oh, it's still a cab. Still a cab. But with many additional oh. benefits. <laughs> it's extraordinary. The body has been completely sealed to waterproof it, and running boards full of foam have been attached to add buoyancy and stop the cab rocking from side to side in the water. The usual engine remains up front to drive the wheels, but now, poking out of the boot, is a propeller attached to a 10-horsepower electric outboard motor, controlled by a hand throttle inside. See you, boys. <laughs> None of the modifications stop it being road legal, although the extras have added weight and put the suspension under rather a lot of strain. Oh, that was a, that was a dodgy one. That brought, brought down my visor. The noises. It's not actually anything serious. It's. It's the foam and an aluminium base, apparently, from all those slung. So that's causing um, a slightly noisier and bumpier ride than I would be used to. A little unnerving, considering I'm about to turn off the traffic-clogged roads and see if my amphicab will let me take a shortcut down the Thames. It's hard to imagine how this could float, I have to say. <laughs> it takes all my faith in technologists and engineers to entrust myself to this on water. It's just wrong. We've all seen those films. I feel like Chuck Yeager must have felt before he first broke the speed of sound in one of his jets. The right stuff. They say you always feel nervous your first time. Too blooming right you do. Oh my goodness. This is extraordinary. The propeller's going. I'm afloat in a cab. This is wonderful. It's not very fast. Oh, there we go. Captain Birdsfry is making steady, graceful progress. Nothing can possibly go wrong. Should I be worried about the smoke? Oh. It appears the propeller has caught on something as the motor has stopped. I am stricken. And rather embarrassingly, I'm just being overtaken by a duck. Help! Help! The aquatic division of my gadget man boffins immediately leapt into action to tow me to safety. I do what I'll call Jonathan. The magic of Bluetooth. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. I am in the Thames on a floating amphibious cab. It sounds like the most flamboyant end to a stag night ever. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> the Hangover Part 3, the London story. I'm now emerald with envy. <laughs> well, you, you had your fun on your on your lovely tricycle. But um, anyway, I will see you Wednesday night and Thursday night with any luck. I hope you're still with us. <laughs> Indeed. I might be wet and covered in seaweed. All right. You dry up. OK, lots of love. Thanks. Bye-bye. 
After 25 minutes repair work, the propeller is fixed. For hire. Taxi! Just marvellous. With no traffic lights, speed cameras or congestion, I'm free to worry about more important things. My in-car espresso machine. That'll stop one falling asleep at the wheel. Mmm, tasty. There's a serious point here that my Amphicab is making. With rush hours crippling much of the country into gridlock, opening up a major transportation route like a river, something that runs through the heart of most of our cities, might not be such a mad concept. idea that I could approach a bank and then engage the engine and just drive off is almost incredible. Just needs a pair of wings and it's chitty chitty bang bang. But maybe I'll save that for another day.